Never thought it would look so good, right? Yep. Hey, Mike, I got some you can mow. <laughs> well, uh, I'd say I'll be right over, but it'd be a while before I get there. <laughs> okay, we're good right. to go. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Uh, why don't we all begin like we begin all meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Well, welcome everyone to this evening's meeting of the Town Planning Board. The first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of our last meeting held on January the 11th. So moved. Second. second. Motion made by Ann, second by Richard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. The minutes are approved as written. Folks, the next item on the agenda is the application by Woodland Hills for their subdivision. This is a 21 lot subdivision. At our last meeting, uh, I had indicated that I wanted to target our next, uh, the, the next date as February 22nd as a date for a public hearing. I've discussed this in some detail with Lisa. We, uh, we've tried to determine what is the best course of action for the public hearing. And very candidly, I prefer public hearings in person. But because of the large number of people who have appeared at the last hearings, and because of the COVID circumstances, and the fact that we're having difficulty locating a hall that will permit us to be there, uh, I know we did the Manlius Fire Department, and uh, that's been prohibited. I know we did uh, St. Uh, Immaculate Conception Church and the bishop has restricted how many are allowed to be there. I don't think we have any alternative. I think we have to do it virtual meeting. So I, think we'll, I actually think it will work, Joe. I think, think it will, Fred. I see. I think it will work. It will uh, cause people to talk one at a time, at least. That's that's very true. So at this point, yeah. I would entertain a motion to uh, schedule a public hearing for February the 22nd. So moved. I Second. didn't see who, who said, was that Mike? Richard. It was Rich. Rich. And Arnie, did you raise your hand a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The meeting is now scheduled for public hearing. Lisa, I'm going to direct you to uh, make the publications go out, letting the public be aware of the public hearing. And folks, just so you know, based upon the number of people who have spoken already and the number of letters, I'm trying to keep our calendar clear on February 22nd so that this is the only item on the agenda. If that is at all possible, we are trying to schedule in that fashion. Okay? <clears throat> All right, um, and I think Tom Douglas had been on, so he knows that, oh, he's still on. So he's aware of the next date for the public hearing, okay? The uh, next item on the agenda is an application by Wildcat Renewables. And this is relative to a site plan and special use permit for a solar array located at 7390 Kirkville Road, East Syracuse. That is tax map number 055-01-10.1. At our last meeting, they, need, they made an initial presentation to us. So at this point, I'd like to uh, open this up to the members of the board if they have additional questions concerning this. Mm -hmm. um, and I had one particular question. I, I am looking for assurances that this project is not going to go into the rear portion of your premises, because if it does, then it's going to go right up against Canterbury Woods, Whiskwood Lane, and Helfer Lane. Um, does somebody want to speak to that point? I'll, uh, I'll defer to Robert. I, I, you might be referring to a submittal that was made earlier today or on Friday. 
I haven't seen any submittal from earlier today at all, or, or Friday for that matter. Okay, uh, yes, the plan is, is not to, to develop any other portion of the property than uh, the, mm -hmm. the sort of frontage along the road, which I can um, reshare my screen here. Uh, so this is this is the extent of the development. Um, this is Kirkville Road, and this is the project area. And this is going to be a 1.6 megawatt plant. Correct. Um, current, yes. I'm seeing what appears to be fencing around the perimeter. Um, am I correct in that 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 is fencing? Yeah, you can see. Um, I believe it's this. Uh, this line here with the X's is marks the spot where the fence line would be. But I'm not seeing the, the height of the fence identified. Um, I believe it's usually six feet. Um, Robert, yeah, it, it would be a seven feet. Seven feet is it's what's required <laughs> per code, a minimum of seven feet. <laughs> um, so it would be a, a seven foot tall um, we typically use a fixed knot kind of deer fencing system um, that provides the necessary security, but also allows the benefit of some small games, rabbits, squirrels, that type of stuff to be able to transverse through the project area. Uh, but larger game deer and whatnot would not be able to uh, transverse uh, through the project area. Okay. And the property, the premises within the fencing that is going to be maintained throughout, is that correct? Yes. You're, you're, you're talking about the project fence area and asking yes. if it would be maintained. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll, I will open it up to the board if the board has further questions. I have just two things. Just to clarify that the leased premises is in fact where the fence is going around the panels. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And the other thing I got to ask about what I heard a couple minutes ago, that was there was a submittal done either on Friday or today. Is that accurate? Uh, I'm going to defer to Robert for that one. There were some updates made based on the questions from the town engineer. Yeah, Rich. Um... Ali Sullivan did send in um, some questions, but seeing that um, th this meeting was to basically set um, the date for the public hearing. Yep. Um, I, I got the comments. The comments look fine. I've talked to Kelly earlier today, as Rob probably knows. Um, and I think um, Lisa will get that information. Oh, there's Kelly. Lisa will get that information circulated. Uh, there was one drawing that Kelly sent over that was um, uh, superseded by a different drawing, and it was the, the question that Joe had, how far back would the solar panels go? And they only go to the wetland area. Okay. So, we, so, we, so we have additional information. Um, it's nothing that we have to act on tonight, and we still get that out, and we can review that in anticipation of the public hearing, hopefully, okay. if we decide we're going to set that. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Doug. Yep, I sent all that out this afternoon. Okay. Some of, some of us did not get an opportunity to review it because we didn't realize it was there. Uh, that's, that's my point. Uh, Lisa, are they going to submit 12 copies of this so we have paper copies to review prior to the public hearing? I can probably just print you off what they sent. Okay. That should be okay. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. There's only, a, there's only a few. Yeah, it's not big. It's not big. Okay, all right. But, it, but it, looks, it, looks, it looks like it's answered all of our questions. Great. Did any other board members have questions? <clears throat> uh, that being the case, I would entertain a motion to schedule a public hearing. Lisa, are we still available for February 8th? Yes, we are. I'll make that motion. I'll second. second. Uh, Anne made a motion, second by Michael Roy, to uh, schedule for February twenty for February eighth. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm not seeing anybody imposed. Is that correct? 
Okay. Um, okay. This stands adjourned until February 8th for a public hearing. Uh, the public may or may not come. Um, and it would be beneficial if, if at least one somebody was present to speak on behalf of the petitioner to answer any questions the public might have in the event that they come. Okay. Great. Thank you. Lisa, will you send out all the notices to the Yes, to I the... will. Okay, great. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, Kelly. Folks, the next item on our agenda is an application by uh, Naparella Consulting. And this is relative to a zone change recommendation. Uh, we've been asked by the town board to make a recommendation as to whether a zone change should occur on this property from CA to CB. This is the property located at 7030 Manlius Center Road, East Syracuse. Uh, this is the premises formerly used by Fremont Lanes Bowling Alley. And uh, this is for a proposed self storage facility. Matt, are you on board? I sure am. Thank you, Matt, uh, Mr. This Chairman. Is the first, this is the first appearance. So, Matt, if you'd be kind enough just to give uh, the board an idea of, of why you're requesting a zone change and, and what for. Yeah, we've, we're going to share our screen, and Christian's going to kind of run through a very quick. Um, PowerPoint of the development. And with us tonight, you got my colleague, uh, design engineer, Christian Hill, and uh, Charlie Lockwood from the ownership group. Uh, Greg Rinaldi's unavailable tonight. So Christian's gonna kind of run through this, kind of give you the basis of um, the project site, the location, and the, the uh, application we put forth. Go ahead, Christian. Thank you, Matt. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, as the chairman stated, we are here to present for a zone change application for the property located at uh, 7030 Manlius Center Road in the town of Manlius. Um, as Matt stated with us tonight is Charlie Lockwood representing the ownership group and uh, G&T Properties is the applicant. So um, just to let you know where the location is. We are right on the western border of the town of Manlius on the south side of Manlius Center Road, um, just as you're leaving to go into the town of DeWitt. Um, it is comprised of two tax parcels, um, and we've already been in discussions with the code enforcement officer, Randy Capriotti, um, to talk about doing a consolidation should um, this project move forward. Um, that would be solved as just uh, administrative lot line adjustment. Um, that's our understanding of it. So the subject site um, was previously a commercial development, now a vacant commercial property. So if this project were to move forward, it would be classified as a redevelopment. Um, on the west side, you have the daycare. On the east side, you have the fire station. And uh, across the street is that automobile repair and sales shop. Um, the zoning district currently is commercial A for the subject site. Um, to the west, the daycare and the properties to the town border are all zoned commercial B. Uh, the property to the east, the fire station is commercial A. But then all of the properties to the intersection are zoned commercial B as well. So apart from the fire station, all properties on the south side of Manlia Center Road there, um, aside from our subject site, are zoned uh, commercial B. And then across Manlia Center Road, um, that automobile repair shop is zoned commercial A, and then there's that commercial plaza um, in the NS district um, on the northern side of Manlia Center Road. Um, and that's just an overview of what we submitted to you. Um, that's the zone change map. Again, um, the two parcels we're looking at are in gray there and they're currently zoned commercial A, um, looking to change them to commercial B to kind of match the surrounding character characteristics on the south side of mainly a center road there. Um, so we like to be transparent and let you know what the project is that we're asking the zone change for. Um, that is a self storage facility um, up front there that building along Manlius Center Road 
that would be an indoor um, climate controlled storage facility with at the entrance a little office section um, so that this would be a gated facility obviously um, you need security for the um, outdoor storage buildings and those would just be your typical drive up storage buildings with the overhead doors um, and then the surrounding perimeter of the property um, we would do our best job to provide landscape buffers and screening um, so as to not affect uh, either of the neighboring properties. Um, just to give an example of what that frontmost building would look like, um, this, is, this is kind of what we would be looking at, something like this for the office slash uh, indoor storage building um, up front. We would try to provide something um, that looks nice with windows, some stone veneer, some accents, um, some ephus, and that would kind of provide a visual buffer to the rest of the um, drive up storage buildings that would be on the interior of the site. Um, so this is just to give an example of what we're going for. We, we want this project to, to look nice from mainly a center road streetscape. Um, and that that kind of summarizes what we are going for here. I'm going to end my screen share and I'm going to turn it back over to the board. Um, again, we're just looking for a recommendation back to the town board um, and I'll hand it over if you have any yeah. questions or comments, we're here to address them. Yeah, Joe, if I could jump in here. Richard, of course. Um, and Jamie, I defer to you. There's a couple things. I do not believe this is a lot line adjustment. Uh, a lot line adjustment, you start with two lots, you end up with two lots. Going from two to one, that's a re-subdivision. Not that the process is that much different, but my understanding is that's what they would have to do in order to get to where they want to get to. Um, do you, so that's item number one. Number two, do you have any pictures or any drawings so we could see what the actual warehouse would look like. I mean, we saw the office, it looks great, but what would the rest of the development look like? And you probably don't have that tonight for us, but that would be something I would like to see somewhere hey, down Rich the road. And Richard. And, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, this is Charlie uh, speaking. So I, I used to own BNC self storage down the road to the west of this, this proposed site. And and if you go down towards Drot Drive, where the Superior Seal is, yep. there's a BNC self storage that actually backs up to 41 there. The manufacturer is Tracti, and that's the same building company that we would be using. So what we're trying to accomplish is make the front building that was referenced in the PowerPoint as attractive as possible. So the buildings behind it, um, you know, with the overhead doors that, that was explained, almost will be impossible to even see from Bridge Street. So we're trying to make that front building inside climate controlled storage and really attractive front. And then the buildings behind it would be standard self storage buildings, similar to down the road at BNC self storage. Okay, I'll take a ride down, take a look at it. I mean, the, the office building itself, I don't know how many square feet, but certainly doesn't block the entire project but you know i'm sure we'll get into it as we go further and and matt this is a question for you and i'm testing my memory but i seem to remember that this was cb years ago changed to ca is that accurate you know i, I think we'll have to just take a look at that history it very well could be i don't you know um the trailers parked down there yeah, there was there was RV trailers and such there, you know, as recently as probably five years ago, when when Greg had it and you know was kind of just trying to get some revenue off of this piece of property that ever since, uh, as Joe said, uh, Fremont Lanes uh, uh, went out of business and was demoed. Uh, it's been kind of a vacant piece and uh, you know kind of a piece of property that has been under several different short term leases um over the last probably eight nine years now so um you know the i i can share my screen i've got some samples charlie of other track t standard overhead doors but it's you know pretty standard in the back but 
But really, um, when we get into planning board, Richard, we can kind of really take a look at some of those visual impacts that you talked about. But when you look at that site plan and you see the length of that um, climate control building, it's, it's just about the entire piece of the property and short of some angles as you're heading, heading east on uh, Manlius Center Road, um, it'll be really difficult to see past there, especially with uh, um, the automatic wrought iron gate system and everything else. And then this building that um, Greg and Charlie are planning on a, a really finished, uh, finished stone with glass veneer look like we showed in that picture. So, you know, we can kind of get into that in the planning scenario. Um, but the thought was certainly on Manly Center Road, we want to make it appealing um, and then uh, and then functional uh, for the rest of it for the self storage pieces. No, I, I appreciate that, Matt. Thank you. I mean, one of the things that this board needs to understand, and I know they do, and I like to talk a lot, but once you change a parcel from CA to CB, it can be anything within CB. And maybe this project doesn't move forward and something else comes up and, and it starts to move forward. We just need to understand the things that could be put there if it's CB. That's why I asked if it was CB turn to CA. And that's that's my recollection. Doug, maybe you, you remember, but this goes back several years and it might've been when the sheds were put up on that property. I can't remember, but um, it's a question I have that I'd like answered somewhere down the road. Well, I, I asked uh, Jamie to let us know. My, my concern is also in the event that this project did not go forward and we made a recommendation and the town changed the zoning to CB, what other activities could go in there? And Jamie, do you have uh, those type of activities that you could just give us an idea of what would be authorized? Well, let me just say for, for starters that um, in this new code, so that we have the, the new code that was just passed um, end of last year, there was a delineation between indoor storage and outdoor storage. So that, that front building is indoor storage and it is allowed in the CA. So no matter what, they can do that or they could do a bunch of those just to put that out there on the on the CA. There are uses, it, it would be, um, you know, what I didn't do is go line by line to say, hey, what, what else is, you know, is there that wouldn't be um, allowed? But I think specifically there are things that might be allowed by special use permit in the CA, which are allowed by right in CB, for example. Um, yeah, I can read, Jamie, I've got that in front of me. I can read through what's allowed in CB and we can kind of quickly, if we want to do it now or we can do that as a analysis, you know, piece of paper, but uh, I've right. got it on my screen, so. Go ahead, throw it up. Okay, let me throw that up, hold on. Share button. Okay, so let me, uh, can't quite get down here. Whoa. I'm moving things. There we go. All right. So well, this is the this was the zoning before that uh, change that Jamie was talking about. But the top line of this top paragraph becomes the CA district that we are today. So we got hotels, retail, uh, banks, including drive-through, uh, retail establishments through drive-through, indoor theaters, restaurants, outdoor sta sales on a small scale, um, and as Jamie said, the the new designation on that table which I have somewhere in here, um, indicated that indoor storage or indoor self-storage was allowed. The commercial B, which would be the Delta, what we're trying for, it says all uh, permitted uses in commercial A, so all of these, uh, plus uh, drive-in establishments, places of amusement, restaurants or stands, warehouses, wholesale establishments, lumber yards, and farm implement, so that's a delta, outdoor theaters, and then probably, um, this is another big one, commercial repair garages, uh, re drive and retail fueling stations. Um, so you, you can get the convenience store or the, the fueling like you have at the corner with the red jacket and such. So uh, those are the deltas that I see, the main ones become uh, the warehousing and the repair garages and fueling. 
Right, vehicle businesses. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, that's yeah. certainly the new designation. And the, dri and the, the outdoor and the storage. And the drive-through. And the drive-through, drive right. But, right. The, but the new designation was the outdoor storage, which was only previously allowed in the industrial district, but with the new designation by the town board is now allowed in a CB district. That, that's correct, Matt. So Jamie, if, if they're allowed to have indoor storage in CA, is there a need for a zone change? Well, they want the outdoor storage. They, I mean, they want the, um, the here's the definitions of the, of the indoor storage. So self-storage facilities. Here's the indoor, a building with outdoor access to internal common area as opposed to outdoor access to individual storage units. And then outdoor is a building with multiple doors for access to individual storage units from the outdoors. So, okay. I'm, so by I'm definition, totally... we are outdoor storage, uh, right. uh, Richard. Right. So but, what they're saying is that the in CA, the indoor storage has to be through a common area prior right. to going to, to the storage areas. Right. where outdoor storage is directly into the storage area. Correct. Okay. Like, like a garage. Yep. Okay. I got it. And I know that was very carefully um, discussed and debated about those two differences. And previously, neither of those was allowed in other than industrial. Right. So it's right. already been um, expanded to yep. the CA. I agree. So folks, what we can do is we can, uh, we can either uh, delay this until a later time and, and think about things, or we can have a discussion now amongst the board members as to what your feelings are, keeping in mind that this is simply a recommendation to the town board. Any site plan would have to come back in front of the planning board for more specific approval at a later time, if in fact we make that recommendation. Uh, Joe, I don't, um, I don't find anything objectionable of all the things that were listed for CB for that stretch along that Manlius Center Road up there. We've got CB neighbors, we've got CB across the road, or we've got the same kind of activities across the street. Um, I can't think of, I mean, you know, outdoor theater probably would not work there because it's too small. But, uh, you know, most of those things are the kind of things that are going on on that road anyway or could so i i don't i wouldn't have much of a concern about changing the zoning although i i kind of agree that that uh for the storage facility they could almost get by with ca there although i guess well, that's outside, though. Uh, they couldn't do outside storage well, we talk calling it outside storage when an individual goes and unlocks their door outdoors, yeah. you know, not going through a common area. Yeah, I can understand that a little bit. I don't well, know. I, I, I think, Fred, in my mind, outdoor storage is, is expanded to having boats and trailers and other things, Good. not in the storage units, but out in the parking lot. I, I guess I would, Joe, it, and this is just my feeling, I don't. I'm not objectionable to this, it makes sense. I would just simply like to know if this were CB prior to it being changed to CA, and now we're going back to CB. And I, I did not do the research on that and I apologize, but that would help me make this decision. The, this is the same lot that we had the uh, RVs on. Yes. Remember Correct. those two years ago, yep. we were all on, we can all kind of remember that. And I don't think we, I don't think we bothered with the zone. I mean, the zone for that activity was, I guess, was all right. We also, before that, had sheds out there. Yes. Door sheds. Right. That's correct. CB does allow, and which C, CA does not, commercial storage or warehouse. Outdoor display and storage, including commercial storage or warehouse. Now, can we, you put in there that they, they can't store like cars and things outside there? Everything has to go in the, into the uh, buildings? 
Yeah, we, we don't plan to do any outside storage with cars, RVs, boats, or anything like that. We don't have the space on that particular piece to do that. So everything will be enclosed. Mm -hmm. So you look at that layout plan, uh, really <coughs> that we are maximizing the units. So that's really where uh, Charlie and Greg are gonna get their equity out of this particular development. So there is no, there's no, um, blanket RV or car or boat storage on this particular subject site. Good. However, if it were CB, it would be allowed. It would be, yes. So I, you know, that would be a question as to whether that's the appropriate strip for that. Fred thinks it's yeah, okay. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to see outside storage there. You mean and, like and, like vehicles and stuff, Ann? Pardon me? Like like vehicles and boats and, and right. uh, cars yeah. and things like that. Right. And, and I think that's what we need to give some thought to prior to making the recommendation. How many storage units do you tend to have there? Christian, you have the count there? Um, yeah, I believe. Give me the, 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 we got what, five main buildings, right? A few hundred. There's, yeah, there's the front indoor building which will have you know all of the units inside but um each of those each of those strip buildings um on the interior so there's three big ones and then the two ones on the perimeter um those interior ones will have a few dozen so yeah somewhere upwards of 100 units I so, so, so mike just so you're aware each of the units and it, it's kind of a a ratio of how these can be leased out so working with Tracty and Charlie and his experience, uh, we've got a kind of a layout for various sizes. So there's double wides, there's, there's uh, uh, 20 foot wides, 10 foot wides, four foot wides. And we've got to kind of lay those out to get the overall dimensions and such. So we've kind of worked out that plan. So they're not all uniform and, and it helps the leasing um, of the storage units as well. So everything from a, uh, you know, you can fit everything from a, a one bedroom apartment to a, a closet, depending on what they want to lease out and uh, uh, gives the flexibilities for the owners as well. Thanks, Matt. That, that was going to be my next question. What is the sizing of the uh, plan? Yeah. So. The, the, the size of these can range anywhere on the low end, five to 10, five foot wide by 10 foot deep, all the way up to 20 by 20, 400 square feet. The, the most popular size that we have is a 10 by 20 which is about the size of a single car garage. And, um, you know, that seems to be one of the most popular along with a 10 by 10 when people are moving or pharmaceutical reps or someone's going to store a car. Will these be, will these be heated? The, the front building will be climate controlled. Uh -huh. So you'll be accessing the building through hallways and then there'll be, um, there'll be, uh, insulation, there'll be heat in there. And then there'll also be, it'll be, um, humid control as well you know people store art uh some people will store wine things like that and, and, sure. they, and they don't want it exposed to the outdoor elements or that temperature so they'll bring it inside i would i would just like to say that we as a board should take a step back we are not doing a site plan tonight we're doing a recommendation for a zone change and we need to focus on What's, a, what's allowed in CA, what is allowed in CB, and are we comfortable in making that decision or recommendation or not making the recommendation? Forget what they're proposing, but look at the site. Do we want CB there or is CA a better use? And I just, I, I, don't, have a, a I don't have anything in mind, but we're getting, I think, too focused on site plan review and not focused on zone change that's a that's a good point rich um i'll be honest with you i am not a fan of spot zoning but this this in fact is not spot zoning because the neighbors to the west the neighbors to the east they are all cb there seems to be a lot of cb in that general community so in that respect i don't think this is uh out of line with the rest of the community out there um but Rich, you, you indicate you want to hold off a little bit on this. How, how long and what's the purpose of holding off? 
I would, and I should have done this prior and I didn't have time to do it. I would like to know if that was that that site was CB prior to becoming CA, just so I had the ability to I guess to I'd say, also like to know if that were the case, why that happened. And I, I go back to several years ago when I don't know, and, and maybe Ann or Joe, you might've been on it, Doug, Fred, when we were looking at putting the sheds there, I believe the zone was changed. I'm not sure because it changed to outdoor sales. And I, I can't really remember and I didn't do research, so I apologize. But if it were CB, that would be an easier decision for me to make today than if it never were. And you're right, Joe, we have CB on one side, we have CA on the other, we have CB down the road. It's not spot zoning. I just want to get comfortable with my decision. I am presuming, Rich, that is a motion to, uh, to refrain today. Um, that, I said this all, all along, I'm just one vote, Joe. I, it's I know, that's what, uh, Yes, but that's, I, that's my thought. If we could wait one meeting before we make a recommendation to the town board, I would be much more comfortable. Uh, is there a second to the request to delay? I'll second that. Arnie seconds it. Okay, with respect to uh, delaying this matter, uh, we have a first and a second. All in favor of delaying? Aye. 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 Um, I've seen I've seen Rich and Arnie. Anyone else? Aye. And Mike. Okay. Uh, that that Anyone carries else? it. So so we 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 don't need to ask who's opposed to it because it carries. Uh, next meeting, February eighth. Yes. We'll, uh, we will get the, I'll get the comparison of what is in CA versus CB, like what, what the differential is, and I'll get that for you. Okay, and, and I'd like the board to be thinking about this and, and maybe driving mm -hmm. through the area and just taking a peek at that before the next meeting on February 8th, uh, because on February 8th, I think we, we really ought to make a recommendation, either pro or against, and uh, I'll be looking to, to call the vote on that okay okay do you need anything from us as the applicant to do that research or will you guys do that internally to answer uh richard's question we'll do it okay thank you we should be capable of figuring that out matt okay thanks Th thank you thank you gentlemen for appearing tonight we'll see you on the thank 8th. you okay thank you thank you folks the next item on the agenda is simply an application by, uh, this is a special permit renewal relative to Graveyard Auto. This is a property located down at 8132 Saintsville Road in Kirkville. And if what I'm reading is correct from the notes, she has been doing this since 2007, renewing this special use permit. And uh, it looks like every seven years, except this has been nine years this time between uh, the last application and this one. Uh, I do see from Randy indicating that there is a letter saying there are no complaints and no violation, and they've heard nothing from any of the neighboring properties. I would move that we I, uh, recommend or that we extend the uh, special use permit for another seven years. Second. Would that, would that be from the expiration date or from today? From today. The expiration date is what Randy suggested. Okay. okay. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion made by Fred and second by Richard. All in favor of granting her the special use permit? Aye. 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 And I. Okay. Aye. Motion carries. That special use permit is extended. The next item on the agenda is. We granted a special use permit for the property located at 7115 East Genesee Street. However, we failed to state how long that special permit was for. 
and, and I think we have come to a conclusion that the time, the appropriate time is seven years, unless there's some type of a circumstance that would warrant a change. Mm -hmm. So I need to hear a motion from somebody relative to the time of that special permit that we granted. A move we make it seven years. Second. Oh. Motion by Mike, second by Richard. All in favor? Aye. 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 And aye. Thank okay. You. Uh, I had one other item uh, that I wanted to just make you familiar with so that you are aware of it. I don't want our board members to be the last people to hear about things, but with respect to the Woodland Hills subdivision, a lawsuit has been filed. It is not filed against the town itself, but it, is, it relates to what we're doing. Uh, and I'm just going to say that and leave it at that. The lawsuit itself has no bearing and no relevancy to what we are doing. So we should exclude that. I just don't want you folks being surprised if you read in the newspapers or you hear somewhere that there is a lawsuit pending as a result of our project here. Okay. Joe, can I, I, I hate to dig into this, but I'm just curious. That's my nature, I guess. If they're not suing this board who has the ability to pass or not pass the subdivision, who else could they possibly be suing? I'm gonna leave that up to council as to whether it's appropriate to even say that, even to respond to that. Um, well, it, I don't think it is. Um, it is at this point in time, though all um, legal actions are public. And uh, if this one has been filed, then it is uh, it is public notice. But I don't think it's appropriate to talk about right now for this board. Uh, and you know, it, as Joe said, it doesn't influence what we're doing. All right, I, I appreciate that. I'm I apologize to ask, but I just I mean, whether it's council, whether it's engineer, whether it's an architect, whether it doesn't make sense that anybody other than the six of us or whatever that make the decisions could be the ones being sued. So I'll leave it well, at that. Well, and, and the reason I'm pointing it out is uh, it, it has no relevance legally right. on what right. anything we do, but at the same time, it can have a chilling effect on us uh, to some extent. Uh, I, I just didn't want anybody surprised if they see or hear or read about it and wonder why were you not notified that that a lawsuit has been brought and filed. Thank okay. You. Okay. okay. Curiosity you. kills the cat, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe, I love fight. I love digging into these things. And listen, I I want to apologize to the board. Really, I'm I'm very cautious in making decisions, and sometimes I delay things probably beyond when they should be delayed. I apologize for that, but I want to make sure that when I make a decision, it is in the best interest of the town. And we had a discussion tonight that could have gone either way, but that's just how I believe that should go tonight. So I'm sorry if it offended anybody. There's, there's no reason to be offended by anything. Prudence sometimes requires giving more thought to something. Uh, we try to move these petitions through us, but there is such a thing as moving too fast and not giving proper due consideration. So I don't, don't also, apologize for anything. We do meet every two weeks as does the town board. So it, it, in real life, it's not a delay. Okay. Uh, Mike's still gonna be hobbling either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fred, did you wanna uh, make a motion at all? Yes, I do. I move we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second by Arnie, all in favor? Aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank Have a good you. Night. Good night. Take care, guys. Bye.